Hi, it's Oscar. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to generate Java stops for ServiceNow Direct Web Services from the WSDL file. And also, you'll see how convenient is going to be this process to help you out on the integration of HP Universal Discovery with ServiceNow. With the usage of a PowerShell script in Windows, first, we're going to download the Direct Web Service WSDL automatically from a particular ServiceNow instance. Second, we're going to modify the namespace of the WSDL automatically to only have COM ServiceNow www package. Third, we'll generate Java code automatically using WSDL to Java from Access2 API. Finally, we'll compile Java code automatically using Apache Ant to generate the web service tabs in a JAR file. Before moving forward, you'll have to download software for Apache Ant, Axis 2, and Java JDK. You may download the latest versions for Ant and Axis 2, but I recommend to download the same Java JDK version that is running your HP Universal Discovery UCMDB. Once you download the software and install or unzip, we have to configure the system environment variables. We must create four new system variables. First one is at home. Second is access to home. Third is Java home. Last is Java JRE. Also make sure you append these variables with their respected bin folder in the variable path. Remember to check if Java can run in the command line after configuring the system variables. You should check both Java and Java compiler. You will need a workspace to locate the PowerShell script along with a folder to contain the WSDL and Java source code. In this example, the script will allocate all the files within the dev folder, which at this point is empty. Once you're ready, it is quite simple to run the script. Use dot backslash and the name of the script followed by the name of the ServiceNow table for which you want the web service stop. In this case, core company. Then hit enter and let the magic run. The text in green lets you know what the script is doing. If everything goes fine, at the end you'll see build success. It is time to see what the script is doing behind the scenes. In the first block, the script receives only one parameter, the table name, and we have a variable holding the URL for the ServiceNow instance. The following lines of code creates the URI for the WSDL along with the credentials. The second block gets the current location where the script is running and generates a path for that folder including a new subdirectory with the name of the table on it. Then it moves inside the new subdirectory. The third block downloads the WSDL for the table mentioned above using the web client. And the fourth block modifies the namespace of the whistle that includes the name of the table by replacing it only with www.servicenow.com. Fifth block will run whistle to Java API from Axis 2 to generate Java source code from the whistle file. Sixth block runs and command to compile Java code and build the jar file. Let's take a look on the files generated in the dev folder. We can see the core company subdirectory created and within the WSDL downloaded and modified along with the build XML file, the source folder and the build folder. Within build folder we can find inside lib the jar file created.
if you open UCMDB and go to adapter management and surface now integration you can quickly import external resources just pick the jar file generated and enter service now in the other two fields now you can see that the file was added 